Well, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, this is our July edition of Acting for Justice. My name is Jack Jezreel, and I serve on the staff of Just Faith Ministries. I'm joined tonight, as usual, by my colleague, Leela Oakley, and we're delighted that you could join us. So let's begin this evening with a prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we beseech you. We seek to do the good, to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you. But the words come easier than the actions do, and we're sometimes not sure of the way. We do not desire to be a people of empty words and hollow promises. So give us the wisdom and strength to see what love and justice ask of us and be open to new ways of being in this world. We sometimes wanna look away from the wounds of our kin, but give us the courage to face hard truths we would rather not see. Let us be light and leaven to shine a light on the path toward healing and repair. We embrace this journey of faith, walking among your people as we go, so as to see what needs seeing, to hear what needs hearing, to feel what needs feeling. Though we go deliberately, we sense an urgency to respond, so help us to hold the tension of care and gravity together. We trust that the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and love will guide us. And we pray this in the name of the one who walked among the forsaken and announced a new way forward. Amen. Again, welcome everyone. For those of you who are new to Just Faith Ministries, uh, uh, just a word of introduction. Our organization creates small group resources that help people explore the link between their faith and justice and mercy in an intensive and challenging format. Over 70,000 people in over 2,000 churches and organizations across the country have participated in our programs, often with powerful results. Our informal tagline, Just Faith Changes People and Those People Change the World, speaks to these kinds of results. And speaking of results, I would like to be, uh, again, the first to invite you to be a special event. Join us online for this year's third annual impact celebration on Thursday, September 21st at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. This year's event will feature a keynote presentation by New York Times best-selling author, national speaker, and public historian, Dr. Jamar Tisby. Dr. Tisby is the author of The Color of Compromise, The Truth About the American Church's Complicity in Racism, used in Just Faith Ministries' Faith and Racial Healing Program. We will also be announcing the winners of the 2023 Impact Awards, and Leela is putting the link to the event in the chat right now. And so now it's my pleasure to introduce you to tonight's presenters. Both of our speakers tonight are staff members of the organization Village Engage in Greenville, South Carolina. Alicia Brewster is the senior justice consultant at Village Engage, working to support existing just faith groups, identify new groups, and develop a plan for continued expansion in the Greenville area. Inspired by her experiences piloting the Eco Justice Sacred Land Program, and the Spirituality and Racial Equity Program, Alicia is now commissioned and committed to offering these opportunities to everyone in the Greenville community. She also currently serves on the National Just Faith Ministries Board of Directors, and in addition to working with Village Engage, Alicia facilitates South Carolina Interfaith Power and Light, Greenville Mentoring Collaborative, and South Carolina's Poor People's Campaign. Alicia also chairs the Tanglewood Middle School Improvement Council, and she's helping to design Greenville Breakfast Rotary Club's DEI programs and Greenville Homeless Alliance's Advocacy Academy. Susan Stahl serves as the Volunteer Program Director of Village Engage. And just a word about Village Engage, it's faith-based uh, community organization that provides educational opportunities, space for dialogue, and pathways for action to tackle systemic injustices facing the people of Greenville, South Carolina. Susan writes at Village Engage, we believe that when groups 
of spirit-inspired people come together to learn about issues of oppression. Meaningful relationships are established that empower advocates to take the actions necessary to break down systemic barriers and build a more equitable community. Through her role with Village Engage, Susan also serves as a member of the steering committee of the South Carolina Fair Lending Alliance, a statewide coalition working to cap interest rates on predatory consumer loan products. Susan also served as a member and co-chair of the Just Faith Ministries Board. Alicia and Susan, welcome. All right, so I'm gonna get us started. Um, and thank you, Leela, for um, handling our slideshow. Um, as Jack said, I am Susan Stahl and serve as the program director for Village Engage in Greenville, South Carolina. And <clears throat> with my colleague, Alicia Brewster, uh, we are here to share the story how Just Faith programs have made and are continuing to make a difference in our community. And it was not until we were putting together this presentation that Alicia and I realized that this is the 20th anniversary of when the first Just Faith programs were done in Greenville. So if I had a bottle of champagne, I'd pop it and say cheers, um, cheers to our 20th anniversary. Um, so if you are an old timer, a Just Faith old timer like I am, uh, you may know that the Just Faith program used to be 30 weeks long. At least it was when I went through it. It might have even, Jack, it might have even been 100 weeks before me. But when I went through the program, uh, it lasted for 30 weeks. And so in 2003, when it started here in Greenville at St. Anthony of Padua, Catholic Church. It was a 30-week program. So how in the world did Just Faith programming get to the hinterlands of Greenville, South Carolina? Well, did you know that Just Faith founder Jack Jezreel was a tennis star at Greenville's Furman University? So I did a little digging and I found Jack's yearbook from his senior year at Furman. <clears throat> so uh, one thing I wanna just say here is look at all that hair. But I wanna tell you what's really important is that his senior year, not only did Jack win the state intercollegiate tennis championship, but he was also inducted into Phi Beta, the Phi Beta Kappa Honor Society for his um, exceptional academic achievements. No surprise, our very own Jack Jezreel is one smart cookie. Jack, as you might imagine, uh, had an interesting time as a Catholic student attending um, a college that was heavily influenced by Southern Baptist theology. But fast forward to 2009, and Jack was invited back to his alma mater to speak to students about his vocation and how it led him to found Just Faith Ministries. Daniel Chapel, which is pictured on the left, which is huge, it was packed with students and members from the community, and I was one of the community members in the audience. Jack said to us, and I quote, we discover who we are by giving ourselves away. We don't do the work of compassion to get rewards. We do it so we can be changed. We are changed by putting ourselves in the presence of those in crisis. While he was at Furman, Jack also held a workshop for a small group of us, and I still have my notes from this highly engaging workshop where Jack talked about the reign of God, a phrase that's used 142 times in the four Gospels. Jack noted that while Christians are used to hearing these words as a religious phrase, Jesus was actually transforming a political statement 
the political statement being the reign of Caesar into a vision for the nation state of God. The reign of God is at hand means that our ability to live as God intended is at hand. It is available to us now. Okay, now this is where I need an, an angelic sound effect like, oh, because I was trying to figure out what picture I could find, and this is a picture I took at the beach, to illustrate how I felt when I he heard those words. We can live as God intended now. Thus began the first step in my just, justice journey. So as my husband and I uh, left the workshop that Jack facilitated at Furman, we both said, we have to start a just faith group at our church at Westminster Presbyterian Church. So in 2009, we formed the first Protestant just faith group in Greenville. And I can point to that group that was started 14 years ago as the inflection point that shifted the trajectory of my life. And I often say to people, that is the point in my life where I finally got my values, my checkbook and my calendar all aligned. Well, in 2013, Jack was invited to host another workshop in Greenville as part of the year of altruism which was honoring the 75th anniversary of Kristallnacht. So you may know that Kristallnacht, which means the night of broken glass, was a devastating few days in 1938 when Nazi soldiers destroyed 267 synagogues and damaged or destroyed more than 7,000 Jewish uh, businesses throughout Germany and Austria. So we had this event in Greenville to honor the and remember the 75th anniversary of this horrific event. Jack presented a workshop about justice <clears throat> and the reign of God. And this event was planned by a team of people, leaders from synagogues and churches throughout Greenville. So the event was published widely throughout the community and through different faith traditions and denominations. And what we did is we asked each community of faith to bring five to 10 people to hear Jack speak and to learn about Just Faith programs. 300 people showed up for Jack's workshop. And another step toward forward in my justice journey was illuminated. From this gathering, Just Faith groups began forming at more churches. We now regularly have Just Faith groups at Presbyterian, Episcopalian, Baptist, and Methodist churches, in addition to our founding congregation at St. Anthony Catholic Church. Many of the um, groups that are hosted now um, are open to members of the community. And one of the fun things is we have Baptists in group with groups with Episcopalians and we have Catholics participating with Presbyterians, but really more importantly, people who are not affiliated with any faith tradition are also welcome to join a Just Faith group. So five years ago, I met with a guy named Dan Weidenbenner, who is the young executive director of Mill Village Ministries. Mill Village is a faith-based nonprofit here just in Greenville, and it's comprised of a family of social enterprises that are focused on helping build up our community through healthy food, access to bicycles, and I mean access for people who need bicycles for transportation, youth employment, and entrepreneurial training. And entrepreneurial training is focused on uh, primarily minority women entrepreneurs who historically have not had accesses to resources and networks. So Dan had recently participated uh, in a Just Faith group and he wanted to talk about his experience and the transformative power of the program. Dan shared with me that working as the leader of a small nonprofit could be really lonely for him at times. And the fellowship that he found in his Just Faith group had been really important for him at this stage 
of his career. And he agreed, he and I agreed that it would be incredible to find a way to harness the passion of Just Faith grads who after completing a program were saying, oh my gosh, I'm on fire. What next? What can I do to help? So Dan agreed to let me start Village Engage as a new social enterprise under the Mill Village uh, Ministries umbrella. I did not want to start a new nonprofit. I did not want to have to do uh, 501c. I mean, I didn't have to want to apply for 501c3 status. I didn't want to have to do a form 990. So I found a way to come up under an existing nonprofit to form Village Engage. So I wrote a grant application to a local foundation here in Greenville that is very interested in justice. And we got our first $15,000 grant and were able to hire our, a, a very part-time employee. And so another step forward in my pathway to justice was illuminated. So we hired a young woman named Kristen, who I have to say, I'm so excited to say she has ended up going through Wake Forest Divinity and is now working at an Episcopal church in Charlottesville, Virginia, and uh, is on to accomplishing major new things. So we hired Kristen, who had been part of a Just Faith group, so she understood what we were all about. And then what she did is she started by building a database of people that we knew had been through Just Faith programs. So we were trying again to sort of say who have been through these programs, who have has experienced the transformative power of being in a Just Faith group. Then she created um, a very basic website for us, as well as a Facebook page. And um, really importantly, then she began sending out a monthly newsletter to promote the formation of Just Faith groups um, around Greenville and to also highlight community events that aligned with issues that we were talking about in our Just Faith uh, groups. So things like the need for affordable housing um, and public transportation. So since we only had one very part-time employee and one volunteer, me, when we began, uh, we knew that everything that we did, all of our work needed to be done in collaboration with other community organizations. So first of all, we promoted Just Faith programs um, through our newsletter, and we promoted them directly through parishioners and pastors that we had relationships with. So we partnered with area congregations to say, hey, let us tell you about this program. Um, we think it might be of interest for you and your congregation. Um, we, Dan and I, and, and Kristen, had all seen how these programs opened the eyes and the hearts of faithful people to the issues of injustices that so many people in our community are facing. So we wanted to have congregations from all different denominations um, involved. So our Just Faith groups tilled the ground for building a network of justice advocates in Greenville. We had, we had no roadmap. There was no roadmap for what we were doing. There was no plan for what we were doing, but we listened for guidance from the spirit and we simply took each new step forward in faith as it was illuminated. So we knew we wanted to help these Just Faith uh, grads who were on fire for justice. We wanted to help them find their way to organizations that were working on the issues that the grads felt so passionate about. So in 2017, we held our first, what we called a Faith in Action Forum, and we went back to our roots. We held it in the gym of St. Anthony of Padua Catholic Church's school. Jack came back to Greenville for the event, and he gave another inspiring talk. I don't think Jack can do anything when he speaks other than give an inspiring um, talk. So afterwards, um, the people who were in, in attendance were invited to mix and mingle with representatives from 10 
local nonprofits. We had representatives from environmental agencies, groups working to prevent sex trafficking, housing organizations, post incarceration reentry groups, all these different groups, 10 nonprofits were around the edges of that gym with tables set up, ready to meet people so that the people who had come um, and have just heard Jack speak could go and talk with them uh, um, about their work in the community. Again, everything being done in collaboration. And then in 2018 and 2019, we held some issue specific events um, on criminal justice reform, affordable housing and environmental justice. And at each of these events, we featured um, a panel discussion with area experts who talked about the issue, whichever issue we were highlighting. And then they also talked about ways that members of the faith community, as well as congregations could become part of the solution. And then really key was after each panel discussion, there was about an hour of time for people to go and mix and mingle with community groups working on the specific issue. Well, when the pandemic hit in 2020, everything came to a screeching halt. We had to cancel the forum that we had planned um, to address the issue of predatory lending in our state. So like all of us to some level in the world um, took a forced pause. We took, we took this forced pause as a time to reflect on our work. And you will likely remember that in February of 2020, Ahmaud Arbery was murdered while out for a jog in Georgia. In early March, Breonna Taylor was shot by police in her apartment in Louisville, Kentucky. And then in May, George Floyd's horrific murder by police was captured on video. So Americans were, we were all sequestered at home to avoid COVID. We were watching the news and we were watching in full color the tragedy of these murder, mur murders. Well, providentially, the fall before, so very recently, Just Faith Ministries had introduced its three-part racial justice series. So here in Greenville, after a period of discernment about what role Village, should, Village Engage should take in the wake of these murders at this really um, critical period in our history, after taking time to discern, we decided that what we wanted to do was focus in, laser focus in on Just Faith's racial justice series. So we encouraged faith communities around the city to lean into this series, and we helped facilitators figure out how to meet virtually via Zoom. We did a lot of technological handholding. Well, the racial justice series and the ability for groups to meet virtually carried us through 2020 and into 2021. And I am going to, that's sort of our old history, and I am going to um, turn things over to my colleague, Alicia Brewster, to talk about our more recent history. Thank you, Susan. I appreciate that history lesson. Um, I actually joined Susan at Village Engage in March of last year after participating in my first Just Faith Ministries program, Sacred Land, and that was a virtual in 2020. And then my second program, Spirituality and Racial Equity, I did in 2021. And I can um, honestly say that I felt, um, you know, a little bit like scales were taken off of my eyes and um, that I had kind of dipped a little bit deeper into some issues that were already really stirring within me. Um, and then on top of that, we were, you know, it was a time when, of course, there were lots of political and ideological divisions that were becoming even greater. Um, so our communities and some of our families were really divided over some really, really important questions. And um, those conversations that we were having in the Just Faith 
programs and the opportunities that it gave me um, to be able to just sit back and reflect, um, it inspired me and it gave me renewed hope. So it was, um, you know, again, providential for me that Susan um, back in 2022, early 2022, came and presented this opportunity for me to be able to um, dig a little bit deeper with Village Engage and go a little deeper uh, with the work that was happening in our community. And I will say that um, my bio is a little bit old, so I probably should update that because, you know, I um, have just been really am just um, so taken aback by the authenticity of Just Faith Ministries and um, of Village Engage to really touch on some of the, the topics and discussions that in most places um, there are, you know, just not the level of comfortability to be able to have them. And so um, this has kind of made me kind of um, redirect some of the energy that I was maybe spending in other places to, again, go a little bit deeper with the work that Just Faith Ministries and Village Engage is doing. So my initial role with Village Engage was to encourage local churches, as Susan said, to continue or to begin Just Faith Ministries programs and to assist them as needed. Um, but during those kind of initial days with Just or excuse me, with Village Engage, I had conversations with recent graduates and with some of the facilitators. And I heard a desire for, from them for greater engagement and for groups that were also more diverse. So as a matter of fact, one of the, um, one of the um, graduates who was also, a, um, had I think maybe even had done a couple of programs said, you know, I'm not really interested in joining another group of all white women. And so the, that was, you know, something that I, that I kind of chewed on and with the kind of the feedback that I was getting from participants and all of the seats that have been planted within me, um, it, it seemed like it was time to maybe go a step further or do something a little bit different. So Village Engage 2.0 was something that Susan and I um, worked on over kind of a three hour brainstorming session last May and really using um, our personal experiences and mine in particular with building really deep relationships in some of our historically marginalized communities in Greenville helped to guide the direction of uh, vision or Village Engage 2.0. And you can see on the screen our mission now, or what we're doing maybe a little bit differently is providing pathways to activate the power of communities working together to build a more just and compassionate Greenville. So what we knew is that we had hundreds of people in Greenville who had experienced a mental and a spiritual shift because of Just Faith Ministries transformative educational modules. And as a matter of fact, by 2022, 592 people in 25 churches and different organizations had actually participated in a Just Faith program. And then of course, many others had been touched by those 592 people who had gone through those programs. So we carefully and strategically decided to take Just Faith Ministries programs to historically marginalized communities and to even invite Just Faith Ministry program graduates to join some of those community-based groups. We know, of course, um, well, maybe not, of course, but, but um, I think many of us have come to realize that racism is not even always conscious. And so we were really selective about inviting white people into Black spaces and Black communities for Just, just Faith um, ministry small groups. And then we also knew that um, even individuals from oppressed groups can be complicit um, in the oppression of marginalized groups. And so we felt that we had to be very careful about how we were bringing those Just Faith modules um, into community. And we felt it was also just as important for predominantly black and brown communities and churches to experience these powerful modules. So since fall 2022, we've hosted five diverse community groups using predominantly the Want to Talk module. And we worked with Just Faith Ministries to pilot the new Just Action program, which was phenomenal. And this is a picture on the screen of that Just Faith Minister, that um, Just Action group. This was done with an organization, um, an initiative called 
um, Greenville Homeless Alliance. And so we were able to identify an issue that was very important to the individuals who were in this picture and really talk about how we could use some of the strategies that were presented in Just Action to address homelessness in Greenville. Village Engage um, also to make these community groups happen provides a stipend. And this is critically important for, um, for facilitators, especially when we are going into communities again, where um, the individuals just don't have the capacity to be able to, you know, have two to three hours a week to be able to facilitate this um, without charge. And so we pay a stipend for those community facilitators and we pay the registration book fees for um, individuals who participate who are not able to afford to um, pay for those books and for their, their participation. The overwhelming response has been extremely positive. Um, many of the participants are asking for additional opportunities and for um, opportunities to volunteer um, or to serve as a facilitator for new groups. We also kicked off an annual Faith and Justice Forum last year that centers marginalized voices and faith-inspired solutions. Our very first event centered the youth voice because we know youth are always, um, for the most part, directly impacted by policy decisions, but their voices, and especially the voices of marginalized youth, are often missing from community-level conversations and decisions um, as it relates to injustices in communities. So that was an extremely powerful um, opportunity to really hear from young people in our community. Um, one of the big topics that um, many of them were concerned about was mental health, and they were there to offer some solutions that um, unfortunately, many times we don't consider um, really the power that they have to be able to reach and to be able to encourage their peers. So and that was an excellent way to kick off our Faith and Justice Forum last year. Later this year, on November 8th, we will host the Faith and Justice Summit um, entitled Economic Liberation for All. And during that summit, we will examine structural and systemic barriers to financial well-being and the solutions and opportunities that are offered by local businesses, faith, and community organizations and others in Greenville. Like our small groups, we will engage impacted community members and leaders. We'll have youth and members of our ecumenical faith community. And we will talk about how to tackle statewide legislation and countywide um, issues about transportation, housing, and homelessness policy. Village Engage is also providing leadership for local and statewide pol work for policy change. So purposeful action is another pillar of the work of Village Engage now. We're looking at how we activate the power of people towards sustainable change. So as um, I believe Susan has already mentioned, we are a member of a statewide coalition to cap interest rates on predatory loans in South Carolina. Um, South Carolina is a state with very little regulation on supervised lenders. So high pressure marketing often lures people into an endless cycle of high rate loans. And Susan, along with others, lead our state's efforts and keeps village engaged supporters and our community partners informed about the effective ways and strategies to engage in this legislative process. Village Engage is also playing a key role in educating and galvanizing community members to support a faith-led effort to prioritize and allocate adequate funding to meet the housing needs of low and moderate income residents in Greenville. And on the right, there's a picture of um, an event back in March where we joined with over 1,500 people representing diverse congregations, many who were just faith graduates to hold our elected officials accountable. And this faith-led initiative um, called Greenville Organized for Accountable Leadership, or GOAL, achieved some historic wins for our community by influencing both our city and county councils to pass budgets that contain several millions in funding for affordable housing. That was a huge win for Greenville. And then finally, um, in September of this year, we're very excited 20 years later that we will have 
um, the Executive Director of Just Faith Ministries, this time Susie Tierney, come back to Greenville. First Baptist of Greenville, um, here in Greenville, is hosting an, a dinner, an evening dinner gathering for a presentation about growing your justice ministry. And that will be a presentation given by Susie, by Matt Rollins, who's with us today. He's pastor, a pastor at First Baptist, and me. So as Susan and I um, were talking about this presentation in particular, we thought back to that year of altruism presentation 10 years ago. And we thought, well, you know, this is an opportunity for us to celebrate 20 years, but it's also an opportunity for us to use what we knew worked 10 years ago to be able to grow the number of congregations using Just Faith programs. So we decided it would be good to encourage groups of people from churches and community organizations to bring five to 10 people for that presentation. And so that's the way that we're going to market this event. We're going to invite new congregations, again, to bring members of their congregation um, and have them seated to be able to talk about what it looks like to grow justice ministry in their church, and then also as an individual, what that looks like. So as we move forward into kind of 3.0, um, we've just began, you know, just really discerning the direction that um, we will go going forward. We don't know exactly what the focus and strategies and activities are going to be in the next you know, years ahead. Things are quickly changing, but we know um, just as in the past, as Susan mentioned, as she was really discerning and just listening, to, um, you know, for God's direction that um, we, if we continue to just really lean in um, and really um, allow, you know, the, the work that we're doing in the community to inform the way that we move going forward, that we'll be able to remain adaptable. And we will just continue to observe, you know, the threats and opportunities that are going on um, that are available in our community to determine the direction going forward. We know um, for one thing that we've learned from the past that um, this past year, we focused really heavily on faithful advocacy and that provided really some major wins for our community. So we're thinking about that as we you know, discern the direction going forward. We're thinking about how we might be able to target our advocacy strategies even further and target partnerships even that may be um, effective in our community. We do know, so even though we may not know specifically, you know, what it looks like to build common ground, we do know that Just Faith Ministries educational programs are going to continue to be foundational. Um, they have been so important for hundreds and, um, you know, probably even thousands of individuals in Greenville County um, to become aware and to be able to begin acknowledging the embedded systemic and structural racism that is really permeating all of the sectors of our community in Greenville as it is in many of our communities. We see civil dialogue programs also like Want to Talk and My Neighbor's Voice becoming essential tools in our toolkit for building that common ground and for advancing a beloved community in our homes as well as in our community and our state. So we're glad that Just Faith Ministries is always producing new modules because that will allow us to always have fresh content to be able to share and to offer our current church and future church and community partners. But um, just in closing, I think we envision continued growth into new churches throughout Greenville, continued growth with our community groups. And we also foresee being able to build common ground with local law enforcement, with school leadership, with youth, and with others in a strategic way so that we can continue to um, move and advance justice forward. So with that, I think we want to open up for questions. And I will ask you know, Jack if you are going to facilitate that. Yeah, Alicia, I think we're going to break into small groups first. So uh, Alicia and Susan, thank you very much. Um, outside of a couple of photos, I thought it was just fabulous. And uh, <laughs> and and thanks for the history. Thanks for the 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 template, the 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 snapshot of how things can move from small to large. Uh, it, so Leela's going to post questions. Leela, are those in the chat? Yeah, Leela's posted some questions uh, in the chat room. 
uh, I'm sorry, in the chat uh, function, and, and we're going to break into small groups for just 10 minutes to talk about some some of the things that uh, Leela's posted in the chat. Leela, uh, uh, you can put those there, and then um, I'm just inviting everybody to spend just 10 minutes with each other to chat about some of these things. We'll come back and then be able to talk uh, as a large group with Alicia and Susan uh, with questions that you might have about going forward. Uh, so uh, I think we're ready to go, Leela. Welcome back, folks. I hope your conversations were interesting. Um, Susan, I was going to ask you and Alicia, if uh, and Leela, you too, if we could maybe, because we're a smaller group tonight, maybe we could just open up the floor and if uh, people could just unmute themselves and either give some feedback from what they talked about in their groups or if they have a special question that they would like Susan or Alicia to consider. Um, let's proceed that way. Does that sound okay with everybody? Yeah, okay. Well, um, so uh, again, did anybody uh, have a particularly um, generative conversation and, and maybe it prompted a question or an observation that you'd like to share with the rest of the group or to ask uh, Alicia or Susan? So let me just open it up to anybody who's feeling particularly extroverted tonight. <laughs> uh, Meg, go ahead ahead. You know me, I'm no introvert. Um, and we were lucky, Suzanne and I, to have Susan in our little group. And I asked Susan, you know, about, um, you know, the right people at the right time. But she also um, was very frank about, you know, it wasn't an all the up trajectory. There's some up and down. But she also offered something that I thought was very helpful of having pastors in her area willing to call pastors in our area um, and say what what this was like, you know, giving some some credential to it. And um, I think that's a really great tip. So thank you. Great. Anybody else? Question, comment, uh, report back from your group or whatever you like. Well, on the end of my group, I was pleased to learn I'm Norma Givens from Greer. South Carolina and Susan's friend. Uh, I'll identify with her tonight. Sicily, I was I was happy to know that Jess Faith was also involved in the uh, border uh, issues that we have here in this country. And a nice lady from Seattle, Washington, shared their experience with the border control and how things are for that group of people. So it's very ex extensive, and I'm happy to learn that. Thank you. Anybody else? Hi, I'm Lisa um, Bloomhagen from Des Moines, Iowa, and um, and I uh, graduated from high school in Greenville, so I was particularly interested in this um, presentation because most of my relatives live there, and I visit often. Um, and just was very intrigued by everything that you're doing and um, know that it's taken a lot of energy and time to get it to the place where it is now. But um, I find it really interesting. And my question is um, that you've been intentionally, um, you work really hard to make sure that there's equal representation among peoples in your groups. Um, which I think is absolutely critical um, because you can get a lot of people together that think they have all the answers. <laughs> and if the person that's there that you're trying to help can't have a voice and in the decision making, I think it's it's a very it's a tragedy. And I've been in so many situations like that. Um, is that pretty consistent um, in your groups? And how do you manage to keep that? um going i guess is my question like how do you how do you continue to even that out and has it been consistent so i'll start because um i i think it's really important to say that until alicia um became a colleague last year 
Um, we were primarily um, doing programs in affluent white churches and had middle to upper middle class to wealthy white people going through programs solely. Um, other than an occasional a person like Norma, who's a member of one of our large, uh, the largest Episcopal church um, here. And so um, when Alicia, and I would say this is absolutely the key, if you are going to engage with people across um, racial um, and socioeconomic um, lines, you have got to have a trusted person who's in leadership. So Alicia's career has been dedicated to working across all different kinds of lines, and she is trusted in communities. So when Alicia says, I think this is a program that would be of interest to you or to your community, she is trusted. It's a totally different thing than if I tried to go into the community. It's very different. So Alicia, what would you say about that? I appreciate that. And I agree. I think, um, yeah, everything starts with relationship. Um, you know, you have to have that before any content will be relevant to the um, individual or individuals. And I think, um, you know, it does, you know, require kind of trying to figure out where you have an opportunity with someone who you do have relationship with to expose them. And that's kind of what happened with me is I was exposed because you know, I knew one of the um, former um, employees of, of, well, actually both of the um, past coordinators for Just Faith and was, in, in, excuse me, of um, Village Engagement was invited to participate in a program. Um, and because I knew, you know, and loved both of them, I agreed, even though I felt like, you know, I really don't have time to do this. <laughs> but because I, I really liked the people who asked me to do it, I agreed to do it. And yeah, after that, I was sold. And so it's been easy for me to be able to sell it to others because as Susan said, um, you know, the, the relationships that I, you know, have in the African-American communities and are in Greenville, as well as, you know, other um, relationships that I have has, has made it very easy. And I would also say not every group. So we, in terms of, um, how we are looking at how we're going to continue to grow. We are going to continue to do programs like particularly the racial justice series within white congregations because the people in those congregations need to have understand about privilege and power and justice and healing. Um, whereas in the diverse groups, we're working more on the dialogue skills with want to talk. And that's been really, really powerful. So all of our groups are not diverse. They, they won't all be diverse, but, um, it has been, it has had a profound impact on us um, and on the community where we can go into a community center and we can say, hey, like executive director of this community center, would you be a co-facilitator and let's get like the the principal of the middle school to be involved that's in the neighborhood. Let's get some of the people from the neighborhood. Let's get a mix so that we're really um uh, we're really across lines in the community talking, but those are very, we, we're very intentional about how do we put those together. As Alicia said, it's really important we get the right people in those groups, um, but then we're still going to go to, and, and we did, we just had, we've got a fabulous um, um, Black Baptist Church, primarily Black Baptist Church here in Greenville that just did, um, Norma, it's Long Branch Baptist Church, and I just saw Pastor Dogan, and they just did their first Want to Talk group and had an amazing experience with it. So that was a primarily Black group, all but one of the members of that congregation um, were Black. So we're, we're kind of just going wherever the spirit's taking us and kind of figuring out what's the right program and how's the best way to talk to this group of people because they're all different. So there, it is not a one size fits all. And that's okay. That's okay. One of the other big things, and I mentioned this in our group, was 
So you got the highlights of 20 years. Um, we are still operating with on a tiny budget. We are getting we're we're very flexible and we are able to get a lot done, but everything that we are doing is being done in collaboration with other organizations. They're helping us promote events, they're helping us um, uh, figure out who participants can be. So, so much of it is about building relationships within the community, networking within, through those relationships in the community. And I'm talking about the United Way, um, Habitat, um, you know, our, we have a lot of like Habitat, other housing groups, we have a lot of faith-based food banks. Those are great places to say, this is a really powerful program that encourages people to become um, volunteers and advocates. And so we just keep talking about it and keep talking about it, but it's not an overnight thing. Um, and we don't know exactly what the next step is gonna be, but that's okay. Oh, Susan and Alicia, um, I have a follow-up question. I, it, it sounds like a lot of your work, not all, but a lot of your work has been into churches. And I'm wondering what your experience has been as to how important it is for the pastor to be interested or not. And I have a follow-up question depending upon your answer. <laughs> so what, what can you tell the rest of us about that? Because, and I, I, I know that you know this, but I'll just make it all clear. A lot of us struggle with getting, uh, if you will, leadership support for this kind of thing. And we're wondering how you've, how you've navigated some of that, if you have. Yeah. So I would say, and we, it's great that we've got Norma here, who is a member of Christ Church Episcopal, which is a huge, primary, predominantly white Episcopal church. Um, the people who have gone through Just Faith programs have pushed the rector and the ministers like at our at the big event at First Baptist, the goal where we literally had all of our elected officials come up on stage and say they were going to work to committing funding for affordable housing. It did my heart so much good. And I don't know if you were there, Norma. I was you, there. Your I rector. Yes. And your rector gave the closing prayer. So yes. the rector, the senior pastor of this huge affluent white Episcopal church. And he was there on that stage because all of the people like Norma who have been through Just Faith programs at that congregation have been pushing, they have infiltrated the outreach committee. They are pushing and pushing and pushing. On the other hand, there are other um, pastors who, so, um, while, uh, and, and, you know, a lot of times the ideas, our pastors are really, really, they're really busy. Um, and they, they need ideas to be percolated up to them. Now it's really incredible when a pastor goes through a just faith group, we've had, which we actually have like Matt, who is a pastor, he's here in the blue shirt. Um, there's Matt, who is a pastor at First Baptist, who has facilitated probably more Just Faith groups practically than all of us combined. So having Matt's influence on First Baptist from the, so it's a both, it's a both and. It can percolate up and it can also come. And as a matter of fact, when we have Susie Tierney coming in September, Susie and Matt are going to uh, co-present and Susie is kind of talking about what it's like to get people in just faith and get it fermenting from the ground up and Matt's going to be talking about from a leadership standpoint what it's like to build a justice ministry in a congregation so again it's not a one size fits all and Matt or Alicia would y'all sort of agree I would. The only other thing that I could think is, you know, maybe inviting people from your congregation to be a part of a different group so that more people within that congregation have been exposed to it. And of course, you know, influencing the people who influence the pastor. <laughs> so kind of doing multiple things to try to get it into the congregation. Yeah. 
May may I add, I would I would strongly work with you, Susan, to identify uh, other churches. One good thing that happened to me while being a part of Just Faith, while we knew a lot of things existed, the literature, the books that we read, validated and substantiated a lot of things we did not know that we didn't get in school. Uh, the laws that were passed uh, and how they have affected our lives uh, over time. So I, I'm sure there are some communities, uh, some ch churches um, that I was a part of that I could, that would be happy just to get the information. DeSantis has been involved a long time, whether y'all know it or not. We didn't learn a lot of stuff in school either. Just faith gave us good information. They provide excellent resources for us to understand the foundation, the history, and how we still have uh, a lot of things uh, that's turned in our favor. Now, today, we see it. And I have felt so very sad for the Supreme Court decisions and a lot of things that have happened. So. Thanks, Norma. Yeah. Uh, Ed, I see your hand up. Do you want to jump in? Yeah. I was in the group with Norma. Thank God. And uh, <clears throat> she talked about living in the home that they've been in their family for 100 years. And that the conditions in the neighborhood, the streets and everything, are neglected by the city of Greer. Greer is the home to um, BMW. So they have money, but that money isn't being used. And I'm wondering how just faith groups fit into uh, raising hell about the discrimination that Norma's community is experiencing in yeah. career. That's and, that's and the, sad, the sad part, they're going back through the white community refurbishing, where we have not gotten the first. That's right. Sorry, I didn't mention that. And you know, that is where I would say so. Ed, and Susan has visited me. Yeah, I have. I have sat on Norma's front porch and it's amazing to be in this on this front porch of this home that has been in her family for over 100 years. But um, we all know and it, it can be particularly when you have your eyes opened, it's um, it, it's really difficult to see the magnitude of the issues. So um, we were very excited and and our just faith network in Greenville did we talk about tilling the soil I mentioned in my little breakout group um, so we have a, a congregational based community organizing group that's a member of DART D-A-R-T which is out of Florida they have um, organizations in nine states and that picture that was in the presentation that Alicia did and Matt is real involved with it so that we had and Norma and I were talking there were 15 over it was the most people that have ever been in that sanctuary over 1500 yeah. people yeah. and we were talking about investment in housing and uh, funding a mental health hotline so yeah. I and I had said uh, I was we were just uh, Matt and I just had lunch and Alicia with one of the organizers of that dark group. And I said, I wanted to say, how many people in here have been in a Just Faith group? Because there were so many people in that room, in that sanctuary who had been in a Just Faith group who are finding ways to advocate. So that was huge in terms of calling our elected officials literally one by one onto the stage. And again, there are many issues so there are lots of different ways that we're getting involved, but we are, I think we are just really, and with the help of this congregational based community organizing group, we're finding a way to really come together for the people power of 
literally saying, this is not okay. And this is what we want. And they kind of said, okay, and are putting it in budgets, which is amazing. The faith community has never come together in that strength here. And so what the Just Faith has done and, and what Village Engage has helped to do over the years is because we're creating all these people like we know of 600, but there are more, so many, there are more than that. There are, there are over a thousand people who have been impacted. So they're ready to make waves. They're looking for pathways. So that's what we're trying to do is find pathways. So. And I have to plug Just Action, the newest module that Just Faith um, just released. I think that's a really, really good tool with, I mean, just hundreds of different creative ideas that um, even for the most experienced organizer, I think that, you know, you could learn, you know, some new things from that tool. So I would encourage Just Action. Thank you. I'll say a word about that, uh, Alicia, before we sign off tonight. I was going to say something real quick. Yes, Matt, please. And in the Just Action module, part of that module is choosing an issue in your community to kind of dissect it, analyze it, figure out where some points are that you can address. So Ed, you could, uh, or anybody, you if you were to go through the Just Action module, um, that you could choose that issue, for example, and it's kind of your model issue or, or community problem that you kind of dissect and figure out how to approach from a community or people power perspective. So that's why I, I agree with Alicia, it's such a powerful module because you can actually practice how you might approach a problem and then it kind of propels you forward into continuing with that issue after the, after the eight week module ends. Thanks. Thanks, Matt. Uh, we have maybe time for one more question for Alicia or Susan. Anybody? Well, let's, I, I just can't thank you both enough for this story. This is just so inspiring. And I think um, so many pieces of it uh, you know, appear to be actionable, and 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 I'd I'd like to think that maybe folks who are watching tonight and who will see this video some other time will be able to pull some pieces from it and make it their own. So, could we all just thank Alicia and Susan with a a quiet clap? <laughs> thank you both so much. And let me, for those of you who are new to our work or maybe unfamiliar with this program that uh, Matt and others have mentioned called Just Action. It's a program that introduces participants to tools for action, advocacy, and organizing. They're rooted in our faith tradition. And um, these very tools have inspired the ordinary and extraordinary change makers throughout history. So it's a skill-based program. It can be conducted either virtually or in person, like all of our programs. It begins by guiding your group in discerning a justice concern, whatever that might be, as Matt mentioned, you pick whatever topic is on your group's mind, and then your group will focus their time together on that topic for the rest of the program. And then the process, the just action process, introduces the tools and the principles to help you stand in solidarity with those affected by the issue, mobilize others for action and advocate effectively for lasting change. And then during the final sessions, Just Action actually guides participants in articulating a specific achievable goal around your chosen focus area and help you create a one to three month action plan that incorporates the skills introduced in the program. So that's the uh, kind of the thumb, uh, the, the uh, mini, description of the program. And I hope you'll go online, take a look at it, or, or uh, maybe even get in touch with Leela, who will help you uh, discern about whether it might be a program that you can use in your church. Well, um, last announcement, and then we'll pray and call it a night. I'd like to invite you to next month's Acting for Justice event on Thursday, August 20th, for a presentation entitled 
Introduction to Land Justice, Private Property and Healing the Harms of Colonization by community organizer, Sarah Bradley of the organization called Nuns and Nuns. For those of you who don't know what that is, we're talking about Catholic nuns and young people who don't claim any particular religion working together. And in this case, they're working together on land justice related to the dispossession of indigenous peoples. So we'll hope you join us next month. And until then, let me close us in a very short prayer. Let us pray. Wake us up, O oh Lord. Open our eyes to the thousand wonders, the thousand miracles that make up this day. Help us see the beauty, the intricacy, the sacred embedded in all that is. Let us not sleepwalk through this astounding world. Let us not turn the world into a product or a convenience or an attraction or an object. Instead, let us be struck by awe and delight, by gratitude and kinship. And let us be inspired by a sense of responsibility and stewardship and care. Let it be said of us that we respected this handiwork of God and that the earth is better because we have lived. Amen. And again, thank you all for being with us. It's such a pleasure. I look forward to seeing you next month and good night.